from the patient files of Dr. Jeremiah Arkham, director of Arkham Asylum. Patient Harvey Dent, also known as Two-Face. The patient suffers from disassociative identity disorder and obsessive compulsive behavior. He's obsessed with a two-headed coin and switches between his two separate personalities depending on the toss of this coin. Session 5. <clears throat> so, Harvey, how are we feeling today? No, I thought as much. Harvey, hello? Two Face? Anyone? No. The patient has been like this for two weeks now, nearly catatonic, a result of a failed therapy technique of mine. I took away his coin. Well, I suppose there's no other choice. Thank you, Doctor. For a while there, we didn't know who we were. I have to say I'm disappointed, Harvey. I really hoped that taking away your coin would force you to choose a persona on your own. Instead, you lost any persona. What can I tell you, Doctor? I'm disappointed myself. And what does Two-Face say? Sorry, Doctor. He's not available right now. Right. I think your therapy technique was worth a shot, though. Don't be too hard on yourself, Doctor. It can happen to the best of us. That's nice of you to say, Harvey. So, what happens next? I prepared for this. I have a new test for you. A test that will determine how dependent on the coin you truly are. I hope, anyway. All right, Doctor. Sounds good to me. What's the test? Bring it on me. I have here a small sample of your case files as district attorney. Ah, the good old days. Yes. By the way, how's your golf swing? Did it ever improve? No, I'd say it got worse. I don't have much time for the golf course these days, anyway. That's a shame. Neither have I, but you probably could have guessed that. So, Harvey, for this test, I will read up a few of these cases, and then ask you how you feel about the sentences. I'm hoping to get opinions from the both of you. Sounds like a stupid test to me, Doc. Oh, hello, Two-Face. It's gonna fail. You know why? Because you're a quack. Clueless fraud, hiding behind a fancy suit and a doctor's degree. Always the charm, eh? I always despised you. That's lovely. Now let's get started with the test, shall we? Whatever. Here we are. The State versus Richard Ramirez. Oh, that scumbag. He was charged with raping and murdering two women. You urge for life imprisonment, but since his arrest was made by the Batman, an outlawed vigilante at the time, the case was entirely dismissed. How did that make you feel? Sure, I urge for a life sentence, but the law's the law. It doesn't matter how I feel. And Batman was an outlaw. He had no right to make any arrests. Not legally. I see. How about this one? Susanna Childs. Remember her? Sure. She was pulled over in her car due to a broken headlight, when the officer discovered two ounces of cocaine in her glove compartment. She was looking at a lengthy prison sentence, but you offered her a plea bargain, 
a drastically reduced sentence in favor of getting the name of her supplier. She refused and ended up with 10 years in prison. How did you feel about that? 10 years wasn't enough. That bitch should have given us the name and spent her life in prison. People like her are a disease. They poison the streets with their disgusting vices. There is no cure for them. Trust me, I've seen enough cons in my day to know. No place for reform, eh? No one ever reforms. Susanna was released on parole a couple of years ago. She seems to be doing fine so far. No relapses. It's only a matter of time, Doc. George Lancaster. One of your earliest cases as an assistant DA. George was driving while under the influence and crashed his car, destroying a road sign. You urged for a fine and community service. He got five years in prison. How did you feel about that? Well, I do have to admit, I didn't feel very good about that one. As I understood it, the judge had a grudge against drunk drivers. Her daughter was apparently killed by a drunk driver a few years earlier. She allowed personal emotions to influence her sentencing. That wasn't right. George didn't kill anyone. That wasn't the law. Interesting. Uh, the Joker's first crime. You were the prosecutor. He was charged with the murder of 20 people, poisoned at a funeral, a test run of his deadly laughing gas. He proudly admitted to it as well. An open and shut case. You urge for execution by lethal injection. However, due to pleading insanity, he was sentenced to be here instead. How do you feel? Again, the law's the law. The Joker was clearly proven to be insane, so in the end, I think it was the right decision. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Well, this is interesting. Speaking out of turn, Two-Face, without a coin flip. Well, we ought to know, Two-Face. We've spent a lot of time with the crazy clown. He's completely nuts. You can't deny that. He clearly belongs here. He belongs in a grave, you damn sissy. That's for the law to determine, not you. Soon you'll say that freak Zaz deserves to be cuddled. You disgust me, you spineless goody-good. You're even worse than Batman for crying out loud. Neither of you gets it. That's why this city is so rotten. Because none of you have the guts to do what needs to be done. And you do, huh? If you were in charge, we'd be shooting jaywalkers on sight. Now, now, gentlemen. Let's calm down a bit. This was not what I intended. Shut up, Dr. Mengele. I'll get to you in good time. So, Harvey, if someone broke into our house and raped and murdered our Gilda, would you still want them to have a fair trial? Or would you want to see them hang? Don't bring my wife into this, you slime ball! Why not? She's my wife too, isn't she? <laughs> she prefers me anyway, since I'm a real man. Unlike you. Gilda hates you, you delusional lunatic. <laughs> Didn't sound like it during their last conjugal visit. What? Oh dear. 